About half the world's population, including Hindus, Buddhists and Sikhs, accept reincarnation as a fact, and it was only abandoned by the Christian religion in the 6th century. People who remember past lives almost always tell of violent or untimely deaths, and recent research has shown that the wounds they describe often match birthmarks. A group of people in America are convinced that they are reincarnations of the inhabitants of a small town on the other side of the continent. Their story dates back to the American Civil War, to old lives that have gone with the wind. They were my memories of her death. I think this just can't be, Maureen. This is not occurring, Maureen. And who's begging you? What is this? What's going on? And I was leaving the hypnotherapist, and I stopped my car dead in the road. Maureen Williamson couldn't forget or understand the images in her mind. I cried. I shook. Here I am. I'm a down-to-earth mother. I'm a newspaper reporter. Um, and all of a sudden, I'm referring to a life that happened over 135 years ago. She was so worried that she consulted psychiatrists, but it was only under hypnosis that she found answers, like the name that wouldn't go away. Who is John Daniel Ashford? He's my husband. What year is it? 1861. What's going on? There's a war. So then I ascertained for more questioning that we were in this little town in Virginia, Millboro, and that it, well, the era was that of the American Civil War. Here's Jay right here, and there's Millboro. Maureen had made what was to be the first of many links between past and present. She described a life as Becky, wife of John Daniel Ashford, who she said was a wartime spy. For the majority of the marriage, uh, it was a very happy one. But the war had taken a terrible, terrible toll on the country. Becky's sympathies lay very firmly with the South. But Becky was aware that her husband did have sympathies for the North. Several lifetimes on and 1,800 miles away in Lake Elsinore, California, Maureen's visions then began to involve other local people. She came out of the trance and she announced casually, I saw Joe back there. I said, well, who's Joe? Well, Joe Nazarowski, he has a security office down on Main Street. Joe had no idea that any of this was going on. Maureen made up an excuse to persuade Joe, an ex-police chief, to see the hypnotherapist. Before Joe came in to see me, he had no knowledge of what was going on and what his role was in it. He was very surprised when he found out and very skeptical. But Maureen hadn't picked out the reincarnation of her husband. Under hypnosis, Joe Nazarowski became Charlie Morgan, like her husband a spy, but for the other side. And there was a bigger shock to come. Becky and I are lovers. She comes to visit me in the boarding house where I live. When I found out that Maureen had uh, related pretty much the same story that I related, I was amazed that uh, was that close. The story was getting like some sort of novel. And as Dr. Marge Reader began gathering groups together, she found over 50 people who claimed to have lived together in former lives in Milborough during the American Civil War. Their separate accounts all seemed to tie in. But the key to the story, Becky's husband, John Daniel Ashford, remained missing. Until one night, Marge was out with a friend. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's John. What? It looks exactly like him. I had this overpowering sensation of recognition. I got kind of a, sh a bolt of electricity through my body. Building worker Pat Green thought the claims were ridiculous. He refused to get involved. When I was told that I was this John Daniel Ashford, uh, I couldn't believe it. I didn't want any part of it. Uh, wasn't going to let them hypnotize me. It took about three years for them to finally persuade me. He's a, a very difficult subject. He fights it. But however reluctantly, Pat Green did feel something. And to his amazement, his story fitted the others. I came up with something that really made me feel that uh, there's more to this than I thought. Marge showed me an old photograph of Millborough, and uh, I picked out this particular house. My feelings are there is a hidden room underneath it, 
And in a smaller house on the same property, there's a trap door that leads to a tunnel. Don, what's your attitude about that? It was information which would change Pat's mind. But was he too falling victim to a grand fantasy? And it's got a big barn next to it, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. This is a kind of cooperative play that is being enacted. Well, I, I think hypnosis is very unreliable. Uh, there is no uh, accurate record of, in the memory. It's the hypnotist who believes in this that implants suggestions in the, in the subject. Outside. Or are, are the memories outside? real? I, I would not care. allow Marge to prompt me real. at no. any time or give me any suggestions. You know if it doesn't come out of my head, I don't want to say it. Under hypnosis, Diana Lovegren became Becky's six-year-old daughter, Elizabeth. When she asked me who my mother was, that's when I saw it in an instant, and I was just freaked out. The whole thing was flashing before my eyes. Horrible, horrible. Finally, all the stories Dr. Marge Reader heard were adding up. She worked out that John Daniel Ashford knew Charlie Morgan was working for the other side in the Civil War. His fears were then raised when he found out that Charlie was seeing a local woman. He um, felt that the information might be going the other way, so he ordered uh, her killed, not knowing that that particular lady was his wife. Morning, Mrs. Ashford. And now Maureen Williamson knew what her nightmares yes, meant. It is. My feeling during the regression was, no, I don't want to go. Nice day for a walk. You'll be coming with me. And then the next thing I remember is that I was in the barn. And in the barn is where I saw the struggle. No! No! I watched them and they fought and they fought and somehow he hit her and she went down. And then he just got up and, and ran off. But I stayed where I was. I knew she wasn't going to get up. I knew it. Diana says she was still there when her father came in and discovered her mother's body. Becky! So have the people of Milnborough really been reincarnated together? Or is there another reason for it all? Cryptonesia is an explanation. This is past memory. In other words, you read novels, you see films, and then under a relaxed situation with a hypnotist, you come forth with the story. Whatever the theory is, the only way to prove the story was for Dr. Marge Reader to take the main characters to the half-abandoned town of Milnborough for the first time, in this life at least. Would it be as they described? And would they be able to prove the detailed knowledge they come up with under hypnosis? The nearest thing to a ghost town that you can uh, possibly find. Marge took this videotape as Maureen and Joe revisited the haunts of Becky and Charlie. Every time we turned a corner, we found something that they had talked about in hypnosis. This is the main street through Millboro. There used to be a saloon, a tavern boarding houses upstairs. Joe had described the red boarding house as white, so were his memories false? White? You can see now that it's red, uh, but you can see the underpaint was white. Then Marge tried an experiment. First, she took Joe to find the room where he'd stayed in his previous life. Where was your room, Joe? It was at this corner. This corner room. Huh? Next, she took Maureen. Would she choose the same room? I'll show you where my room's at. I know where your room's at. Let, Joe, let her, let's see it. Let her lead us to your room. That's it. That's what he said. His right room. Here. He said this room was his. That's right. These seemed like minor details to the majority of the population, but to us, they were just terrific. Maureen began digging where she says Becky's house was. She found what appeared to be a fence post. That was a thrill to see that, to know that I was accurate. But all this isn't enough to convince Rick Armstrong, author of six books on Milbrough's history. The buildings in Milbrough uh, are quite old, but it's, it's hard to date them, and so it's uncertain if they were there during the Civil War period. As far as Daniel, John Daniel Ashford and uh, Becky Ashford, uh, 
the constable was not named Ashford at that time. And as her murder was a sensational thing. However, it does not appear in any newspapers or any court records. But one piece of evidence was unearthed to make historians think again when a fire destroyed the house where Pat Green supposedly remembered an underground room. The owner dug out and found an actual room that was underneath where the house had been and also found the door in the floor and the tunnel that led to this room. This whole area with the tracks. In my mind, I had pictured something just like this. This house or a house like this, that bridge, and uh, it's here. How do you explain that? This is weird, it gives me the creeps. I have faced the fears that I've had. I wasn't looking so much for the truth to the story. What I was looking for was my soul. Maureen Williamson's present life has mirrored her past memories. She's now married to one of the Milborough characters, and this time she's hoping for a happy ending. And those are our stories. Whatever you feel about people who claim psychic powers, let me show you this. It was made in Victorian times, and it maps out different areas of the brain, power of will, agreeableness, and knowing faculties. These days, we know much more. Scans can clearly show which areas of the brain are active when, for example, we work out a sum or when we sing. But still, nobody knows how the brain works or what, ultimately, it might be capable of. Good night. <laughs>